Hi, Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. For this week's video, let's turn this small bowl out of ash. As actually, is it a bowl or is it a platter? I think it is kind of halfway in between the two. For this one, it's a simple bowl in many respects or platter, but I made some decisions along the way. One is that I decided to make kind of a, a more of a raised base or foot here. And then later I said, okay, well, I don't want that as heavy, so I hollowed it out here. The sides are quite straight rather than curved. That's a difference. The rim is very straight and flat. I tried to preserve the sharp angles here, uh, but then only round them off with the fine sandpaper at the very last minute. The inside, in contrast, has a little bit of a flat at the lip and then a very shallow, smooth curve on the inside. So it's, it's kind of a simple bowl, but it's also kind of an elegant bowl with its own elegance. The grain is fairly straight and uniform, which also is a touch of elegance. So let's turn this bowl or platter out of ash. This piece of ash came from our club wood exchange back before COVID. I miss our in-person meetings, although we are continuing with online meetings, but no wood exchange. It is a nice looking piece with a fairly uniform surface. It is green wood, but not soaking wet. I have nipped off the corners, but I do not try for a good circle. There's too much chance of overcutting. I would rather deal with the corners with my large bowl gouge. Perfect circular turning blanks are overrated. The blank is pressed against a wood face plate only with live center pressure. That is good enough for a rough turn to get started. With my large bowl gouge, I start my cuts from the bottom. The uniform thickness makes my job easier. I can actually start my cuts in solid wood. Then cut out the intermittent corners from the solid base much easier than cutting intermittent air. Next, trim back the bottom to make it even and consistent. Not a problem with this block. Next, shape the exterior of the bowl. I have in mind somewhat of a pedestal for this one. Before removing too much wood, I cut a tenon for a remount. Then go for final shaping. Now for the reverse mount into a chuck. The tenon fits nicely, flat on the top and a good fit to the dovetail. With the live center in place, I can be more aggressive with the top and while hollowing. With the shallow nature of this pedestal platter, there is not a lot of hollowing. At the last moment, I pull back the live center and finish the hollowing. I then coat the wood with Tray Saver, a Greenwood Sailor. This is a PVA-based product with some unnamed additives. I wonder what the difference would be between this and a PVA glue application. The wood has been drying for over a year. It has lost only 12% moisture, so I guess it was not that wet. The warpage is minor. It is a nice looking green platter. Now the remount. First order of business is to recut the tenon. I preserved the original live center mark. The ladder is again pressed against a wood faceplate 
with the Live Center in the same spot. This is the best chance to for good centering. I want to recut the tenon first in case the platter somehow goes airborne. The mount appears stable. I will continue trimming the exterior now before remounting. I know I will have to trim it just a little bit more later after the axis shift. Here I am mostly shear cutting with my bowl gouge. The handle is very low, the cutting edge is nearly vertical. This wood is cutting beautifully. Now the reversal. To start with, I am doing just a little more shear cutting to compensate for the expected axis shift. Next, the perimeter at the rim. Here, I have decided to keep the corners sharp and not round them over. After checking to ensure I have cut into wood again for the entire perimeter and not leaving spots with the sealer, I can move on to the interior. The interior hollow is shallow. The wood is cutting beautifully. It does not take much to recut the hollow. I confirm uniform wall thickness by measuring. Then I can go thoroughly sand the platter. Now the coal jaws. Fortunately, I only have to finish the small base. I cannot turn as fast with the coal jaws, which makes the work a bit harder. I have marked my target diameter on the foot. I think that will look nice with this platter. I trim off the old tenon and slim down the pedestal. I want to hollow the pedestal just a little bit. It seems appropriate for the platter. Then sand and sign. A quick bath in walnut oil brings out the grain. This is a pretty platter. The wood is very nice to turn, both wet and dry. I probably left it to, to dry a bit too long. It is easy to get distracted while wood is drying. You should see the pile of drying bowls I have from multiple years ago. The challenge is to recall the original plan for the item and to continue to execute the plan. A nice challenge to have. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, and tell your friends. I appreciate your comments and questions. Every week I make a new wood turning video and add it to my website. As usual, I appeal for you to wear your full face shield anytime the lathe is running. I'll see you next week with another wood turning video.